I welcome you all on today's webcast, which is dedicated to the smart trading. And as we know, smart trading is not just about the smart risk management and market timing, but it, uh, it is also about the smart orders that allow us to maximize our returns and to minimize the risk. So I want to focus today on these smart orders that we have at BeatsGap, which is the TVAP, shadow order, the stop limit order, multiple take profits. So we will cover all of these tools that you can use every single day to maximize your returns and to minimize the risk. To quickly remind you, my name is Dmitry. I'm the portfolio manager trader and together with BeatsGap, we are working on the platform optimization and creation of new tools for you guys to to beat the market so we will also cover the risk and return metrics basically that's the element of return and loss projection before you actually initiate the trade the trend analysis so i will show you three indicators pretty easy to use for the trend analysis basically to identify whether the trend is strengthening or it's losing its upside momentum so yeah also we will cover the s board and the classic board what makes them different so i will show you real examples of when it is the best time to launch the s board and the classic board and at the end, the QA session as always, and also during the webcast, I will look at your questions to find the most interesting to answer. And of course, we have the support team in the chat, so they will provide you with meaningful answers as well. So let's jump straight into the action and go to the BitScap platform. So as I log in, this is the interface that I have here. That's the trading section over here and let's switch back to no actually let's let's use the demo mode because the cool thing about the demo mode is that here we have virtual money to trade with and we can use this virtual money absolutely risk-free so basically using virtual money you can uh, experiment with the limit buy sell orders market orders stop limit orders basically to learn what it takes to enter the market or exit the market with the stop limit and other tools that we have so on the left side you have the board where you have the information like I will switch back to the real account just to show you the real order book and let's switch to um, ordinary spot market let's check what is going on with the BDC okay oh it's actually doing pretty well that's nice <clears throat> So anyway, here you have the order book to see what is the current demand and supply on the market, recent trades, and the cool thing that we made is the basically the ratio of buying and selling volume on the market, which um, depicts the balance between the buyers and sellers. So you can see exactly how did the balance change since the last like 30 minutes. So you see whether the market is in favor of buyers or sellers so basically what is the dominance right now on the market and you have this uh, visualization yeah so let's continue to see what else we have here so we made it look like this so that on the left side you have the analytics layout and you have the chart where you can conduct your technical and fundamental analysis and we will cover the technical analysis today a bit I will show you some tips and tricks related to three indicators which is the moving average the RSI and the volume profile which is a bit sophisticated but I will explain to you like the major tips of this volume profile so that it's going to be uh, <clears throat> uh, easy for you to understand how to use it so anyway this is your chart layout and on the right side you have the decision making board so this is where actually the magic happens uh the we start with the limit orders so let's switch to the demo mode and i will show you some sample trades so limit order is a pretty simple one <clears throat> here you are the market maker and since you are the market maker 
you pay the lesser fee compared with the market order because if you want to instantly enter the market with a buy let's say you want to buy uh, bitcoin or let's say you want to sell bitcoin then instantly your order is executed and for this first priority execution you have to pay a slightly higher fee compared with the limit order because in the limit order your order is placed in the is displaced in like in in the order book and you are kind of in a query waiting for the exchange to execute your trade in accordance with your uh, priority and that's why you pay less fee so let's say you want to buy right now i have inch to usdt let's say 10 percent of my portfolio let's see if i have enough of the usdt the current price so you see 10 percent 25 percent so it takes like <clears throat> the calculation of your available usdt so it turns out that 50 percent is exactly 3200 but let's use let's say 300 usdt at the current price maybe a bit lower let's say 73 yeah so what i see here is the take profit and the stop loss so speaking of the take profit here you have the option to set multiple targets and the cool thing about multiple targets is that you can sell out your position proportionately so let's say you want to sell 20 percent no actually it's over here let's say you want to sell 20 percent uh, of your entire position as soon as the price reaches five which is somewhere over here in this area and that's exactly corresponds to the growth of 5.71 percent from the current price so you can also set it to 10 percent and it will automatically calculate <clears throat> the exact price at which it's going to execute this take profit let's say i want to sell here 30 percent okay so we have 20 30 percent split and 30 50 percent is left so we can make like this to six and to seven so <clears throat> the cool thing about this instrument of having multiple take profits is that first of all it spreads the risk and it also maximizes the return because you are not selling everything at the price of five but gradually you are getting rid of this position so you are exposed to the minimized risk and maximize return in this case and the cool thing about bits cap is that you have this return projected estimated like 71 usdt is exactly what you can <clears throat> expect from this trade as the maximum profit if uh, all take profits are uh, hit by the market so this is the profit that you can expect from this trade and as of the step stop loss let's say we want to plot it at 4.5 or somewhere around this area that's 4.4 so you see from the current price down to the stop loss which is down by like the gap is seven percent from your entry price and the risk here is losing 20 usdt so you like you risk twenty dollars for the reward of 71 usdt okay so speaking of uh win to loss ratio this uh trading configuration looks legit because you risk less in order to have like three times more than you risk so this one is an optimal configuration if your projected profit would be let's say <clears throat> only ten dollars and your risk twenty dollars then this is definitely not the optimal trade because you risk more to have only ten dollars which absolutely makes no sense from the risk to return standpoint all right so let's just go with it okay let's click on what's the current price 70 let's load it at 70 yeah so you plot buy inch and you see the limit buy order is on the chart as well as in the order book all right you can say this trade over here in your open orders as well you 
can click on plus to see all the take profit areas that's the exact amount it's gonna sell at the price of 6.95 so yeah everything is here that's the tp which stands for the take profit and the sl which stands for the stop loss if you are not satisfied like i mean if you want to make some changes then just click on this pencil over here and you can change all of this configuration uh, in accordance with your new rules so the cool thing is that it is displayed on the chart already so let's zoom out you see limit buy stop loss for this trade and all the take profits that i set which you can actually move like manually on the chart or you can just change the number manually over here so yeah once again multiple take profits allow you to spread the risk to maximize the return and to minimize the the, the loss like the the risk in this case because <clears throat> the difference between the uh, the unrealized and realized return is is huge because for example I have right now let's go back to my real account to futures so you see right now I have profitable trade it just brings me $35 that's the futures position so I'm in the profit of 35 but this is the unrealized return all right so it means that I'm still in the market and I do not really possess this 35 USDT until like the moment when I exit the market, either did the market sell or uh, market limit sell, sorry, limit sell order. So right now that's the unrealized, that's something that I do not possess yet. Whereas when I close it, it's something which is already in my pocket, like it goes to my pocket. So that's the same case for uh, any open trade and that's why setting take profits basically you ensure that as the market rises you see it executes and cashes out from the market so it fixes the like the profit and something goes to your pocket like 20 percent i guess in this take profit zone then it goes higher another 20 percent you see goes directly to your pocket so that's how you make sure that you are gradually extracting the profit from the market and this can be easily achieved with this take profit multiple targets that we have at Beatscap. So um, there is a question about the stop loss and the trailing up. So the thing about the trailing with the stop loss, let's just uh, cancel all of my ugly drawings here and let's switch to another trade, maybe other trading to BUSD. So yeah. The thing about the stop loss is following. So, I mean, the stop loss which has the trading up. So imagine you entered the market over here. And then it started to... Bars, no, that's not the one. Ghost fate. Yeah, so let's assume the price goes higher like this. So now your open position is in this area, right? And initially your stop loss, let's assume it was somewhere over here. So at the time we launched it, this was the entry price and that was the stop loss. This was the trading setup and let's see the gap. Let's see the gap between our entry price and the stop loss. So it's exactly like minus 2.59%. So as the, the price goes higher, your now uh, position value is here. So the stop loss is going to move together with the uh, market. So it's going to maintain the same gap of 2.59%, right? So your stop loss is going to be here. So from that point A, it's point A, up to the point B, this what trailing enables you to do. Like the stop loss is going to follow your position because uh, if from that point over here the price then suddenly falls the stop loss is going to be triggered and in this case you realize the return so the stop loss here is not your um, loss order 
it's more like the trade profit already because it's above the entry price you see the entry price was remind me over here right and the stop loss initially was over here at point a let's use another one yeah so this green line that's the entry price and that's the uh, stop loss at the time we initiated the trade so at this point this would be a stop loss it would fix the loss in case if the price would fall right but hopefully this won't happen and what you will say is the price going higher the stop loss will follow the market and in this case since it is now higher than the entry price it's going to act as a take profit all right so using the trading uh, stop loss makes sense to again maximize the return and to minimize the risk okay because it ensures that even if it falls after a short rally that you won't lose all the return you would lose a portion of your return and thanks to the trading stop so let's remove all the drawings so this is everything about the limit buy and sell orders pretty easy and yeah use this take profit multiple targets and the stop loss projected return projected loss to use as key metrics for you to analyze the uh, potential risk versus the potential return and make sure that your return is significantly higher than the loss because otherwise it makes no sense to risk the money so let's go further the stop limit so the interesting thing about the stop limit is that you have this new uh, section which is known as the stop it is also known as the uh, trigger price or the conditional price well call it as you want the, uh, the point here is that uh, let's assume that you want to enter the market at certain conditions so you look right now at the chart which is the see ABBA trading to BUSD and let's say blah 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 you made your research and turns out that you expect the market to continue the rally like this right but you don't want to enter the market at this current point because you want to see the price breaching the previous higher high you see h h okay so you want to see the price to breach this point and only after it breaches this point you will enter the market so how to do this so you set the buy stop at this bridge level let's set it at 385 and let's set it like the limit buy also at this point okay and let's say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. ten percent okay let's remove all the drawings okay so for some reason i cannot ah since i don't have the busd that's the problem i don't have the busd that's why i'm not able to buy it okay so let's go with over to usdt in this case so that's the previous higher high and i expect the market to rally so let's set it at 385 385 yeah so here we go so the, the the point here is that once the price and let's use this brush once the price goes higher it uh, reaches this previous higher high level and then reaches the point where we have the stop condition at 385 so as soon as the price reaches this point over here it will automatically open the limit by order okay because otherwise it would be impossible for you to enter the market with such conditions all right so if you would set your simple limit at the price of 385 which is apparently higher than the current price it won't wait for the price to reach 385 it would instantly add, execute the trade at the current price you see let me show you the example like with 100 see by other you see it placed it but it executed it at the current price you see 373 that's what happened but if you don't want this to happen then use the stop limit buy because in this case it ensures that it only buys at 
certain conditions which is defined by the stop price so let's use it again so you see now I have my stop limit over here so that means as soon as the price reaches this level and breaches the previous higher high reaches 385 it will open here in this area at the price of 385 the limit by order okay so that's the, the thing about the stop limit uh, order that you can postpone the trade so that only once your conditions are met it will enter or exit the market so that's why it is known as the stop limit because stop here acts as a certain uh, trigger price and the example how you can use this uh, instrument this smart trade instrument I demonstrated already so it works the other way around when it comes to the stop limit sell let's say uh, you want to to exit the market only if it breaches this lower low over here because what you know that once it breaches this price level most likely it will continue the downfall okay well it's just hypothetically let's let's assume that you expect if it breaches this level then it can, will continue the downfall so the condition here is that it has to breach this price so this is where you can set your stop limit sell in this case so once it reaches this level it will sell in this case and you can also use the stop limit as a ordinary uh, stop loss to, to sell let's say a certain stake uh, out of your entire position let's say you want to sell only 20% so using this stop limit is the exact smart trade that you should use so now let's move on and let's see what else we have we have the tvap which is something i covered like two months ago i guess so the tvap is the perfect tool like that's the perfect smart trade instrument for those who want to uh, enter or exit the market how to say as calm as possible because um, there are some cryptocurrencies that are illiquid like literally nobody like almost nobody is trading this crypto and we know there are quite many of these cryptocurrencies that are highly illiquid and that means that one single trade worth let's say thousand dollars can create a significant red candle yeah just one thousand can literally affect the market significantly or just buying with a thousand dollars can also create a significant green uh, candle in this case so in order to avoid this extreme volatility that you can create on highly liquid crypto and using TVAP is the uh, is the solution for you because at TVAP, let's say you want to buy 30 Ave, no, let's actually use 10, which is worth 3,700. But it won't buy 10 Ave instantly at the current price because otherwise, let's assume that Ave is a liquid crypto and this volume would significantly affect the price. You don't want this to happen, right? So it will split this buy uh, trade by like across multiple buy orders. So and you also set the buy period. So let's say you want to buy ten aves within the period of the next six hours using fifty buy orders. So it means that per each order it will by 0.2 other which is significantly fewer than just instantly buying 10 of this so this is how you basically spread the the volume across multiple uh, buy orders to to enter the market as calmly as possible so you don't want to create the noise around your big trade and this is something that you should consider if you are trading highly illiquid coins or if you are a wealthy individual and let's say you have uh, intention to to buy 
maybe 40 of us no, no actually let's use more like 100 of us which is 37 dollars this can actually affect the market and that's why you would consider TVAP so that you would gradually enter the market at the best entry price as possible okay and sell, same applies with the TVAP sell if you don't want to make the market crazy like you want just to spread this high volume across multiple orders then TVAP is the option for you it will automatically sell 100 others with 50 orders each one is two hours within the period of the next six hours okay fully automatically and this is what you should stick with if you don't want to create the, the like the noise around your trade if you are trading a highly illiquid coin so that's what tvap is all about or of course it's maybe not just about spreading the risk you can also trade tvap on uh, ordinary cryptocurrencies like let's say uh, BNB to USDT which are highly liquid there is a lot of volume here a lot of interest here so apparently uh, if you want to gradually enter the market then using TVAP is the option for you let's say you expect the market to fall a bit from current price down to this so as it falls, you want to make sure that it buys, 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 buys. So using TVAP is the uh, option for you. Let's say you want to buy two BNBs within the period of next six hours using only 10 orders. So, so basically you will see the system executing trades as the market falls. You see one order worth 0 0.2 BNBs, second order, third order, up to 10 orders so basically one order per hour that's the point of TVAP so that's how you can use it as well to make sure you enter the market with the best entry price based on your expectations <clears throat> so let's remove the drawings and let's see what else we have well the shadow order is something that you're gonna use if you don't want your trade to uh, be visible in the order book maybe you are willing to sell a, a, like a big stake of BNB or any other crypto it's mostly related to highly illiquid coins because imagine you are trading a lesser known coin like literally nobody knows this coin and you expect it to rally but once you see in the order book, in the order sell book, a huge position to be sold. So this would drive you crazy. You would think that this dude will crash the market down, right? So this dude would rather use, in this case, the shadow order so that nobody would see his trade un 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 until the price reaches this his price as it sets. So let's say this dude wants to get rid of... Uh, BNB is worth I don't know uh, 40 million or whatever okay no actually that's the price let's say 289 let's say yeah let's assume that's the position he wants to get rid of imagine that with a simple limit sell order everybody would see this trade and they would just go crazy this would drive the market down for sure and the cool thing about the shadow is that nobody sees this trade until the price reaches 289 so only when the price reaches this price level the system will execute the limit sell order so that nobody sees it actually so that's the point of the shadow order if you don't want again to create uh, a noise around your trade and you don't want to to be placed in the order book okay so that's the feature which is good for wealthy individuals so that nobody sees your big trade yeah so let's move on actually that's everything that i wanted to show you regarding the smart trades that we have at beatscap i would suggest you if, if you haven't tried it yet to start with multiple take profits and the stop loss and as well with the stop limit order to, 
to trade based on some conditions that you determine for the market so now let's go to the topic of uh, top three indicators to use to analyze the strength or the weakness of the trend so the first one would be let's actually go to the trading view because there I have more options to show so let's go to the trading view so trading view you can set but but you can actually do this at beats cap over here as well moving average I need well I stand I usually usually use the let's see which one I use yeah actually the the exponential is the one I tend to use and the first one I set the length of 100 and I want to make it bigger can I make it bigger yes make it yellow and let's use another one let's set it at 200 and this style, let's use the orange and white as well. Yeah. So regarding the moving average, basically it shows you how the price is now trading relative to its average past performance. So uh, you have this Yama 100 and Yama 200, which is basically the period. And the, the the like the bigger the number the higher is like the, the longer is the period taken into calculation so the stronger is this line well you can say like that and once you see the price trading above this moving averages that means that's basically a strong bullish signal whereas when you see the price breaching and trading below the moving averages that means that the trend might be losing its momentum upside momentum and it might be the uh, scenario of its further downfall playing with the time frame also makes sense because the longer the time frame the more statistically valid is the data and using shorter time frames that's basically for the intraday traders who are or swing traders that let's say you open the trade at the morning and you close it the next morning so that's pretty much the intraday trade so that's why these traders they stick with the one other chart layout and that's why you see lots of noise around here whereas when it comes to longer time periods you see uh, fewer noise and on a longer time frame it definitely looks like the Bitcoin like no, it's not the Bitcoin it's the BNB is doing pretty well it's trading above the moving average so that's the bullish uh, projection over here that we can see let's maybe go to one inch to BUSD that's not enough data here let's go to our oh, USDT for our so right now you see the price trading exactly at the point where you see the intersection of moving averages so this is identified as the period of consolidation and once the price let me use the pointer and once the price goes higher so it's trade it trades above moving average this is going to be a strong bullish uh, indicator for you if it's straight below then well it's pretty much in the consolidation phase right now but if it goes even lower then this is going to be a bearish signal for this particular crypto all right i mean it doesn't mean that using only these two indicators you get 100 uh, percent golden signals like every signal you see like if the price is trading higher then definitely the trade is going to move even further higher or if you see the price trading below these lines there that means it's gonna fall downward now using multiple uh, technical analysis tools as well as the uh, fundamental sentiment is exactly what you need to be uh, like to increase your odds of success because the thing is that let's say Elon Musk is gonna tweet something in 10 seconds that will move the market 
further up or down. It's just something that can happen, which significantly affects the fundamental sentiment on the market. So it's basically people that are driving the market, not these technical indicators. Technical indicators are used just to show you a broader picture of what is happening on the market. And using moving averages is one of the uh, options for you to analyze the uh, strength or weakness of the trend. So right now for our USDT, it looks like it's in the period of consolidation. So from my standpoint, I would rather stay away from this trade for a while until it goes higher and trades above moving averages. So that's how you can use our moving average. There is also another tactic, uh, like strategy looking for the crossovers. Basically when the uh, short term moving average breaches from above the longer term moving average this is the signal that the market is going to go lower that's exactly what happened over here you see and then later it breached from below and now we see the market is in the consolidation phase so that's how you can use it as well anyway let's move on and let's see what else we have so we also and by the way, the price of Bitcoin right now is $60, and I hope it breaks the 61700 so that we go even higher. So let's use the second tool that I wanted to show you, and that's the uh, volume profile. So let's use the visible range, and let's use the one which is uh, available for basic subscribers which is free of charge. Let's go from that point. So what you see here is that it shows you the volume per each price level. Basically how much was sold and bought on each of the price levels. And this red line, it shows you where the most of the volume been traded on the market that's basically the biggest point of interest and you will find out that naturally this line exactly aligns with the support and resistance levels so that's why using this tool can also show you support and resistances on the market so as a general rule of thumb when you see the price uh, trading above this point where you, you where we had the most volume traded since the 28th of february that means that we are having a bullish momentum over here and that basically this is a bullish signal for us that the trend might continue further and on the right side i have what i what is known as the um, visible range yeah that's the visible range and it shows me the volume traded from that point which was at the 15th of january up to current price and you will see that from like that's basically was the beginning of the year to like let's actually drag the line to the left so yeah you see first of january and let's move it over here to be closer to the current price section so since the the end of january uh, up until today you will see that the most volume traded was at the price of forty seven thousand, and since we are right now in the area above this price that means that we are still having a pretty confident bullish market and only once we breach this level and below is gonna be a dark area for us that's the uh, area where if it breaches the 47,000 then it most likely it can drop even lower so that's how you can use the uh, volume profile which basically shows you which price level has been the most interesting for the market and if we are trading above this point then that means we are in a bullish momentum if it is trading below then most likely the price lacks buying pressure on the market to move higher and that's the bearish signal in this case so right now based on the moving average and based on the volume profile it looks like we are having a pretty strong pretty confident bullish momentum on bitcoin which is good for other cryptocurrencies as well
So what I show you here is not <laughs> the financial advice or whatsoever. These are just tools and there are many tools like this that you can use guys to analyze the market and to to create best strategies so that you will find the best entry and exit price for your smart trades okay so the third tool would be let's remove all the drawings also this one so once again how you use it you see you, you have it over here fixed range that's something that is not available uh, here at this layout even though it's from the trading view but it's a bit limited so if you want to use the volume profile that's on the trading view in this case whereas other tools that you need is the RSI moving averages are here RSI is something that you can plot as well relative strength so it basically shows you the overbought and oversold uh, scenarios on the market as a rule of thumb when you see the, the 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 line at this area or above that means that the market right now is extremely overbought so you see this point from that price it went lower once it went down to the area where we see the over sold in this case this is a buy opportunity and you see right after it breached this level it started to move higher so that's how you use the rsi it basically shows you the overbought and oversold sentiment right now on the market and on avid to use it and let's actually switch to the real account let's use it on bitcoin so you see on bitcoin right now it looks like it still has some space to go until we will see uh, somewhat of the distribution phase when something like this boom see because the market cannot go uh, endlessly to the top sometimes like it needs space so that traders fix re their returns some uh, traders they will open uh, sell trades so that's why the market always looks like most like this you see gradually and that means that on these phases market participants they uh, either fix the returns or they open sell orders to to basically contra trade the market crazy people remove drawings so yeah once again there aside the moving averages and volume profile these are the tools that you can use to analyze the market sentiment from the technical analysis standpoint once again there are so many strategies that you can find on the YouTube, uh, many articles written about it, and we also have some strategies at Beatsgap block. So you just go to Beatsgap, open block section, and you will find many strategies that I have prepared for you guys. Uh, you will find the, the moving average, other tools like the Ishimoku cloud, everything is for you. Just use them to find which one suits you the most and which one you like the most, which one you understand the best and use it accordingly so yeah let's remove all of this so that was basically a brief introduction into the market into the technical analysis if you are a beginner at cryptocurrency trading and you've never used smart trades then using this technical analysis and smart trades that we have enabled for you at Beatsgap is the ultimate solution to uh, to achieve maximized returns for the minimum risk okay so you literally have everything at your disposal like everything that you need to have smart trades that's why they are called smart you see you can have the projected profit the projected loss to estimate your risk to return ratio and all this stuff all indicators to analyze the market sentiment everything here at your disposal so now uh the the last topic is automate trading and basically what makes the as bot which you have here at bot section as bot different from the classic bot this is the hot topic as always uh and yeah some people are getting confused whether or not we should stick with the as bot or the classic bot depending on current market uh, conditions so 
briefly, the S bot is optimal for the sideways market. So what is the sideways market? If you expect the market to move like this for a prolonged period, then stick with the S bot because S bot S bot's investment distribution logic is the best fit for the sideways market. So you will make more returns than the classic bot on this market scenario. So this one is for the S bot. Whereas the classic one is optimal if you expect the market to to go higher like uh, significantly like you you expect the market to go like this okay so in this case stick with the classic bot because due to its investment distribution logic it brings you more returns than the as bot okay so that's basically what you have to choose based on your uh, expectations. If you expect the market to rally, then that's the classic bot. If you expect it to, to move sideways, like the one we see right now on the Aave trading to USDT, you remember? Where I show you the moving averages and what they showed us is that the market right now there is in the accumulation phase then. Basically, for other, it maybe would make more sense to trade as bot right now because it's still kind of uh, unclear where whether it's gonna move higher or not. Okay, so that's what stands for the as bot and the classic bot. So once again, the difference is in the algorithm of investment distribution. For example, in case of the classic bot. It places um, a fixed amount of coins to be purchased or sold so for classic bot it will always buy and sell well in this example I have 10 coins so it's gonna sell and buy always 10 LTCs okay and if 10 LTCs cost $100 it's gonna spend $100 to buy if 10 LTCs cost $90 then it's gonna just spend $90 in this case, if the market from current price, let's use the brush, if from the current price it falls down to the lowest grid buy order. If we calculate all these buys executed, it's going to be exactly $340. So this is going to be your uh, added position to your existing one. So once the market then hopefully goes higher, on this investment you will learn you will earn some returns but comparing this scenario with the as bot and i have it here on reef on reef the the thing is that it doesn't stick with the i mean the as bot doesn't stick with the fixed amount of coins it sticks with the uh, fixed investment value so it always buys worth hundred dollars and sells worth hundred dollars so if you can only buy 10 ltcs then in this case it's gonna buy 10 ltcs of course as the price falls the s bot is able to buy more light coins using just 100 dollars because light coins are now cheaper right so remember that here at classic bot we had 340 in total and in case of the S bot on Reef, this would be one, two, three, four. This is going to be four hundred dollars in this case, right? So your market exposure on the downfall with the S bot is going to be bigger compared with the classic bot, and that's why you will have more returns because having a position worth four hundred dollars compared with 340 is by $60 more and that means you will generate more returns all right I mean yes this this effect is offset by the fact that here you have uh, fewer coins to be sold because uh, here you see on the classic board it's gonna sell more in terms of the USD value so that's why there is no golden rule whether the as board or classic board 
um, better or worse than another one it's just that it depends on the market sentiment and how it moves so for example let's remove all these drawings so for example you expect the market to move sideways but you don't know how exactly it's gonna move because sideways market can be like this right it can also be like this okay so it's never clear whether the classic board is going to outperform the as board even on the uh, on the sideways market but as a rule of thumb as like due to the old statistical analysis that we made and the historic performance the as board has proven to be more profitable than the classic board on the sideways market because the classic board it increases the exposure to the base currency as the market rallies. You see, it spends more with each grid level as the price goes higher because it needs to buy or sell 10 coins as the price goes higher. And that means that your uh, investment exposure is bigger with the classic board and that's why on the rising market you have more um, LTCs generated than the S board and that's why you will earn more. Whereas on the sideways, as board offsets the downfall by buying more coins using cheaper price. And that's why it quickly offsets the downfall that you had on this cryptocurrency. So that's the difference between the as board and the classic board. And that's, the, I think, the best explanation you can find. It might be a bit difficult for some of you, but I'm, I mean, I promise that you just need to practice and you will find which one suits you the most. And that's why at BeatsGap we have the demo mode where you have virtual money to trade with, to experiment with, to find your best trading configuration. So you can literally... Uh, simultaneously launch several configurations on one crypto to see which configuration will bring you more returns so how to do this bitcoin to usdt is well the rule at beats gap is that you can only launch one configuration per each cryptocurrency pair but there is a trick you can trade this bitcoin to other stable coins which is pretty much the same as btc to usdt uh, the same as to BUSD. You see, the price is like pretty much the same. The difference is in just a few dollars. Okay. But anyway, that's the trick for you to launch simultaneously different configurations, but on the same crypto. And by doing so, you can monitor the performance of all these bots and which one will bring you the most, you will find out. That's the trick for you guys to experiment. And I mean, for example, on, on this crypto, you can launch as bot with configurations like 40 grids and take profit, stop loss, all, the, all of that. Another configuration can be a classic bot, but this time on BTC BUSD, which is pretty much the same as USDT. Yeah. You can set here 50 grid levels and uh, yeah, just launch it. You can create another one on. What, what else we have? USDC, right? That's the third stable coin to which you can trade Bitcoin. So we have already three uh, configurations that you can set on one crypto, which is Bitcoin. Okay, so experiment with what we have developed for you guys to find your best trading configuration so that you can beat the market as a beast. And in trading, you have all other tools, all other smart trade tools so that you can minimize the risk and maximize the return with tools like take profit, stop loss and stop limit okay to trade based on your uh, market conditions <clears throat> so now let's see what interesting questions you might have <laughs> okay please explain how the trading up works exactly Okay, Zen, so let me show you this. Let's go to bots. Um, 
Oh, actually, I have this in, in my presentation. It's just that, yeah, you're lucky today. So imagine that this was your initial uh, trading range, upper limit, lower limit. And this is where you set your bot. Like in between here, you have uh, grid levels, grid buy and grid sell orders, all that stuff. Let's assume the price goes higher. It breaches the upper limit price. As you have your trailing up enabled, this will move the trading range automatically. So basically, answering to your question, trailing up enables the bot to follow the market rally by dragging the trading range. You see? Let's assume the price goes even higher, establishes new higher high. Then what's going to happen here? It's going to move the trading range. You see? But what if the price falls from that point? Like this. In this case, the bot will not follow the downfall. And that's why it is known as the trading up. Because it only follows up. It never follows down. Yeah? So that means here that the bot will not trade because the price is no longer within the trading range. But if the price then reverts back, you will see the bot trading again. Imagine it makes new higher high. Of course, the trading range will follow. And this can be an endless process. I can show you some real trades that I have. This I think that's Yuffie. Damn, so many trades, like 400. No, maybe not the best example. I mean, I used to have more examples here. Uh, yeah, definitely not the best one. Ren, maybe, maybe Ren, let's see. <clears throat> anyway, like, uh, I don't have active trades that have the trading up right now. I used to have them, you see, ING135, they all had these trading instruments enabled. And that's why I had insane results. So, it can be like, your, your trading range, let's say, was initially here. But with the trading up, you can be now in this area, like over here, thanks to the trading up, which allows the bot to follow the market rally. Here's the... Yeah, actually I have the example. You see here was my initial trading range over here and once the price breached the upper limit, the bot started to follow the rally and that's why you see all these circles where the bot executed buy and sell orders and that's why it is now trading over here. You see, this is the newly formed trading range from that point up to this point, thanks to the trading. So the trading instrument allows you to maximize your returns as the, as the bot follows the rally. And that's why you always have these opportunities to buy low and sell high for the bot. <clears throat> Let's see what else we have. Yeah, speaking of the futures bots, yes, they are about to be released. We are currently in the uh, beta phase. That means that we have... Uh, a team which is right now trading futures to spot if there are some uh, errors or whatsoever because it's not possible for us to release an absolutely raw product it always takes time to make sure it works the best before all of the users can use it so but um, i guarantee that pretty soon like very very soon we are about to release the futures bots which will allow you to trade in uh, two directions so you can go long and you can short the market to generate returns as the market falls okay so these are two strategies that will be available on futures board which will be called now i will not tell you the name yet just let's just wait for the release and you will find out what this is going to be all about and there will be an absolutely new webcast just dedicated to the futures board because it's a bit different like no it's not actually a bit it's completely different from the spot bots so i will have to yeah explain to you new metrics and tips and clues related to futures board so yeah just wait guys uh, i mean that's that's going to be huge like a really huge thing for you uh, to use to, to to trade even more 
which basically allows you to be exposed to the futures market and as of now you are already exposed to the futures market through the uh, futures trading desk that we have let's switch you see right now i have my 0x with a 10x leverage already trading 34 dollars in profit all metrics key metrics available like the uh, margin required margin ratio liquidation price yeah to analyze the risk like all the, the metrics is here already so right now you can trade futures on the uh, trading interface and soon we are about to release futures bots can you do short sell in trading mm, you mean in futures trading right uh, you mean uh, in futures bots yes short trading will be enabled in futures bots but you can also short sell the market here at futures as well you see market and i can short sell it at any time uh, any available futures contract it's right here hmm. can you tell what is the average create we have to use in the bot so um, as for me like i mean there is no golden strategy as i always tend to say because it's all about your trading style and what suits you the most but as for me i stick with the grid step of 0 0.7 uh, up to 1.4 so that's my trading setup for bots like in most cases even though i have some sample trades that where i have 180 of the maximum grid levels but this is the sample trade for you like for you see it's already eight months since i launched it so this was the sample trade I made, but usually on my real account, whenever I trade, I, I stick with the grid step of 0 0.8 up to 1.4 approximately, okay? Because this is basically your marginal profit. So 1% is a return per each grid execution. So how you can use other tools to set the grid step so for example now you look at the price over here of bitcoin to usd and you see that the volatility is somewhat so like this and you see the volatility here use the price range from the highest to the lowest here so the volatility here is like 14 percent so that means that around 13 grid levels no it's actually 16 i guess yeah 16 around 17 grid levels is going to be around the amount of grid levels you need so that your grid step is exactly one percent basically I, I use this tool to estimate the volatility and i want to make sure that i can seize this entire volatility so that's why i set the amount of grid levels so that my grid step is exactly one percent you can actually just just type one right uh, but i mean it's clearly up to you how to you, you analyze the market and set the amount of grid levels just look at the volatility and make sure that you have enough grid levels to capture all this volatility because you can set your trading range like this i mean not narrow like i'm doing but you can do it like this you see from 29,000 up to 120 this is a configuration that you can have and let's say 80 grid levels yeah so you see this is like what you can set so that the board gradually realizes like realizes the return okay uh, let's see what else we have can you explain the investment change and the bot profit yeah so what you have to understand is that the bot profit is always positive because that's the return generated in the quote currency you see you feed to bitcoin the the profit is going to be generated in bitcoins because it sells the ufit to extract the profit in btc out of the market and right now i have 0 0.016 btcs extracted from the market thanks to this bot but you will notice that my investment change is different so you see 40 on in bot profit but 12 percent in uh, investment chain why so that's the biggest question 
And that's because during this period, unfortunately, this cryptocurrency pair was in the downfall. So that means that the value of UFI has significantly depreciated relative to Bitcoin. And that's why I only have 12% because basically as the price falls, this is a loss for me. And this loss is offset by the profit generated by the bot profit, by the bot, sorry. So once again, the bot profit is already priced in, in the investment change. And this is the primary metric for you, investment change. You see, it means that we are exactly up by 12% to our initial investment. Whereas bot profit can be a different number. It can be even 60%. But if you are in a downfall, then this 60% will be used to offset this negative downfall. And let me show you actually the example why automation uh, is something that many traders have been looking for to minimize the risk. So imagine you invested uh, in quantum here where I have HODL like you just want to to have quantum in your portfolio and do nothing about it you expect the market to rally but what happens is that it falls and now you are minus 6.88 percent this would what, what would you what your HODL strategy would bring you but in automation on this downfall the bot was trading and this profit you see generated in bot profit this profit of 23 dollars it is used to offset this huge downfall impact. And that's why in automation you would have only minus 3% compared with a simple HODL strategy where you would have almost minus 7%. So this is a clear like, example how automation outstrips a simple HODL strategy. It no longer makes sense to HODL the crypto, especially on the downfall, when you have the automation to trade on your behalf, to execute trades, to extract the profit from the market, and you see the bot profit, it offsets this whole downfall by almost twice. So that's why numbers are different. Bot profit, always positive. It is in the quote currency. And investment change is the key metric for you to monitor because that's the only one which shows you how your initial investment has grown up. You see rent to Bitcoin 88%. Why not more than 94? Because you see this short term downfall. This was something that I affect, affected my overall return. You see that's why it's 88 not 94. So that's the, the difference between the pot, bot profit and the investment change and the key metric is investment change here. How to choose best performing pair for smaller investments? Thanks. Well, it just varies depending on the crypto. Let's look what we have here. So apparently Bitcoin now is worth 60,000. So buying one Bitcoin is going to be quite costly. But of course there are cryptos that are trading at $1 or whatsoever. What you have to remember is that per each uh, order there is a minimum requirement. So on Binance, the minimum trade size is $10. So if you want to have 15 grid levels, then at least you must have $150 for sure because of this minimum requirement. But it can be the case that on the same cryptocurrency, let's say rent to Bitcoin, but on different exchange, let's say on OKEx, I don't know if they have rent to Bitcoin on OKEx, but let's assume. So it can be the case that on OKEx there is a lower minimum trade size compared with the Binance. That means that you can spend less to have the same 15 grid levels. Okay, it just depends on the exchange's requirements. Okay, that's that's the key point. Kerry suggests you can set your upper and lower bounds near top and bottom of the highest volume with a stop near the fall of volume yeah that's the strategy that you can use based on these indicators so i i mean guys you have this cool feature which is known as the demo mode and i mean you have can create an insane amount of active bots here to experiment to find which configuration and which strategy suits you the most like you can trade based on the volume profile you can trade based on the overbought and oversold signals 
that you have from the RSI or MACD indicators okay you can use the moving average crossover to enter or exit the market so it's clearly up to you to find which one suits you the most and it's also about the risk management I mean the key to success is your risk management that's it you don't have to be the Nostradamus on this market because it's always about the risk management because in one trade you can make hundred dollars having a risk of only thirty dollars so that means that this profit can offset the next free loser trade so let's say another trade two trade three and trade four and assume that you were wrong over here so thirty dollars loss thirty dollars loss and here thirty dollars loss this is going to be ninety dollars and you are still in profit because you made hundreds okay so i mean it's all about the risk management Make sure that you enter the market with the adequate risk management and that your target return is significantly higher than the uh, risk so that in the future you would be able to cover some losses that you will for sure make. You can be 100% right. You will make uh, loser trades. But just make sure that you follow an adequate risk management to uh, neglect this, like to cover up this losing trades and to be profitable in a long-term perspective don't be greedy by the way as well just stick with the plan don't be greedy and automation allows you to spend less time in front of the monitor so and, and the features like trading up you no longer have to worry about the market breaching new higher highs while you are asleep with the trading up the bot will automatically follow the market rally so you don't have to worry about this you see, you can go away for a long time and the bot will just follow the rally. So uh, I think we covered lots of things today and I hope this was useful for you guys as always. So today was the first time since like three months we covered smart trades. So use them to maximize your returns and to minimize the risk. Experiment in the demo mode and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel where we have lots of useful information like uh, how to set the grid board uh, other guides as well go to the beats gap blog where you have articles related to technical analysis risk management and trading setups for the bots so let me show you uh, beats gap where is it beats gap and you see about block So lots of information here like ready-made strategies for the bots you see i made this for you guys just step-by-step -step guide on how to launch the bot based on patterns for example so it's everything here for you just you have to spend some time to understand it to use it to experiment with it and then find which one suits you the most